Hi guys! In this video, we will unbox, assemble and test the Ofero Laser 1 engraver. You want to know more? Then stay tuned! Hi guys, welcome back! My name is Rui and this is the Rui Raptor YouTube channel. If you want to help us out, you can by giving this video a like and subscribe to the channel. You can also help by joining our Patreon page or by clicking on any of the affiliate links posted below in the video description. So, in this video, we will assemble and test the Ofero Laser 1 engraver. This laser engraver is manufactured by Ortur and has three laser head options to choose from. But first, let's check what's inside the box. Right at the top, we have an instruction sheet. Next is a bag with tools. A bag with parts for air assist. A laser head. Protection goggles. A power supply. A USB cable a protection cover for the laser head and finally the laser engraver. This laser engraver comes fully assembled except for the laser head. Behind this acrylic plate we have the main board equipped with the 32-bit microcontroller and at the front we have the input power connector, the USB connector, the offline controller connector, the reset button and the power on button. The power supply included is this small unit and can output 24 volts and 2 amps. Inside the tool bag we can find some samples to test the laser engraver, some focus tools, a wrench, an allen key, some brackets, the adjustment screw, a brush and some zip ties. Inside the air assist bag we have a 4mm tube, a cylinder which is used to focus the laser hat, an air assist nozzle, a pneumatic fitting, a valve and an allen key and set screws. On the website you can choose one of three laser hats. This is the laser hat from option 1, the LU2-2 with 1600 milliwatts of laser output power. This laser hat has less power when compared with the other two options but has the smallest laser dot and therefore a better option for fine engraving. The protection cover included in the package is for this laser hat. To install it, loosen the two side screws and then slide them in the heatsink side slots. Adjust to the height that you want and secure it. To install the laser hat on the engraver, all you need to do is place the adjustment screw on the right side, slide the laser hat on the X-axis carriage and then secure it with the adjustment screw. Next, take the cable with the 3 pin connector and the fork terminal. Connect the 3 pin connector at the top of the laser hat and then unscrew one of the top screws to connect the fork terminal. The second laser option is the LF2-4-SF. It's a 5500 milliwatt laser and the SF stands for short focus, which means that this laser is great for engraving and for cutting. It includes a small shield that is secured with magnets. This shield also drives the air from the cooling fan down to the working area. The third option is the LF2-4-LF and the LF stands for long focus. This laser head is also 5500 milliwatts of output power but with a larger focus spot. This one comes with a cone installed which will drive the air from the cooling fan down to the working area. The shield can also be installed on the third head. 
If you prefer a better air assist performance, you can remove the cone from the laser head and attach the included air nozzle. To install the nozzle, start by placing the set screw and then the tube fitting. Next, install the nozzle to the laser head. Last but not least, remove the nut from the fitting, insert it on the tube, and install the tube. With this, you can use an air compressor for air assist. We have this small and cheap air compressor and works fairly well. And this is how the laser engraver looks like with each laser head. This laser engraver has a working area of 180 by 180 millimeters. Before we can start testing the engraver, we need to check a few things. One is the movement of the X and Y axis. All the axes must move smooth. Next is the wheel's grip. On the X axis, the bottom wheel is equipped with an eccentric nut. Turning this eccentric nut will increase or decrease the wheel's grip. We made a video explaining how to correctly adjust the wheel's grip, so check the video description for the link. On the y-axis, there are two eccentric nuts located on the right wheels. Use the included wrench to adjust. As for the belt's tension and for the y-axis, if you need to adjust, you need to loosen the right screw that secures the belt to adjust. For the x-axis, it's easier. Just loosen the two screws that secure the idler and adjust. Ok, now connect the power supply and the USB cable from the engraver to the computer. To turn it on, just keep the power on switch pressed for a few seconds. The engraver will then home the X and Y axis. The home position is located at the left front side. This position is determined by the X axis end stop switch located here and the Y axis end stop located here. This position will also be your X and Y zero coordinates. When connecting the laser engraver to a Windows 10 computer, the system automatically recognizes the board, so you don't need to install any driver. Before starting any design, you always need to make sure that your laser is in focus. To do that, and for the laser heads 1 and 3, you need to use the cylinder tool. So start by placing the material you want to engrave or cut on the engraver's working area, and then place the cylinder under the laser head. Loosen the adjustment screw and adjust the height so that the laser's heatsink is on the cylinder. Secure back the laser head and you're done. The laser should now be at the correct height. For the second laser head, you need to use the focus plate. Same as before, place the plate on the material that you want to engrave or cut, lower the laser head until it sits on the plate, and secure it back. Ok, now it's ready to run. With the first laser head, we did some picture engravings on wood. We prepared a picture for engraving and fired up the laser engraver. Don't forget to always use your goggles when working with lasers. 
and keep the laser away from other people if not using protection goggles and also from pads. This head small laser dot is able to provide more detail for picture engravings. With the second laser head, we did some quick drawings. And a bigger drawing also on wood. Many people use these stone pieces as coasters, so we tried engraving on these. And this is the result. It had no issues engraving on this material. And we also tried engraving on a mirror. And here is the result. With some backlight, the result is even better. Next, we try to cut some small models on 2mm and 3mm wood. With these models, we can see how small the laser dot is and the detail that we can get with this head. And finally, the third laser head. This laser head can also engrave but works better for cutting. So we tested cutting different wood materials and with different thicknesses. The hardest one to cut was MDF. We tried cutting a 10 mm thick MDF piece and using air assist with the provided nozzle, but it could only cut down to 6.5 mm. While working, these lasers produce fumes, so make sure you work on a well-ventilated area. The manufacturer has a table with recommended settings for each laser head and for different materials and thicknesses. For all these tests, we used Lightburn software, but laser GRBL can also be used. And that's it you guys, hope you liked the video and if you have any questions, just let us know in the comments below. We will see you guys next time. Bye!